joining me. Um, hey. Great to meet you. Um, just talking about you know, this upcoming show, mm. playing at Eric Clapton's you know, 461 Ocean Boulevard. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Um, I was just interested to know, like, you know, how did you, how did you personally, like, come to become a fan of Eric Clapton, and you know, how and why do you think that came about? Uh, Eric Clapton, Ocean Boulevard. Um, for me. An easy one. I, um, as a very young child, I had a very cool uncle who had a great car with an eight track and a great collection of um, what's become known as classic rock. And uh, 461 Ocean Boulevard was an album that I just loved as a kid. Um, and we drove around and listened to it a lot. And uh, it had a huge impact on my brain. I, I, I got to the point where I just realized that I actually could listen to it and imagine the entire album in my head. Don't need to listen to it anymore. Um, so yeah, that's, that's how I got it originally into uh, Eric Clapton. And how would you say it's kind of influenced you as a musician, as a guitar player? Um, Eric Clapton's influence on me as a guitar player was enormous, um, but it was even before I was a guitar player. It, it just, the music imprinted in, in my brain. And uh, I think that had a much more profound effect. So when I was learning, I already really knew what I wanted to sound like. And, um, and a lot of it was him, some other players too, like Mark Knopfler as well but always Eric Clapton and um, you know there were so many great concerts when I was growing up you know with them playing all the Live Aids and the Montserrats and all of those kind of shows um, it was an amazing time to be learning guitar because we just had these incredible influences amazing shows and Clapton had such diverse bands and he did such a diverse amount of music so the way he affected how I played was I didn't just become a blues musician I just became a musician and I think that's probably the biggest influence that, uh, that he had on me. And what about this album, 461 Ocean Boulevard in particular? Why do you think this is one that, out of his catalogue, has particularly stood the test of time? Uh, um, that's a really good question. Um, the, the Ocean Boulevard thing, I mean, you'll notice a smile on my face even when you say it. I, I, it's, it's just an album, like I say, that imprinted so heavily. It has such diverse styles. Um, the array of different musicians on it as well, you know? Um, and it came at a you know, crazy time in Eric Clapton's life and he had a lot of friends around him trying to, to help him through some things and uh, uh, you can tell there's a lot of love in the album and, and it's great fun to listen to. You don't get bored. It's not like listening to a straight ahead blues album where you've got pretty much you know, 45 minutes of a very similar thing going on. You, if you don't know the album, you don't know what's coming next. In fact, you have no idea what's coming next. You know, reggae, um, improvisational nearly ska, straight blues, hard rock, some great slide guitar playing, some country, um, and yeah, there's something for everybody in there, I think. Yep. And say like, now about you're playing this album live mm. with a band. Yes. Um, you've had to like really absorb, you know, the whole material and music that mm. makes up the album. Yes. Um, what's been like the most fun and maybe what's been the most challenging experience in doing that? Okay, I mean, well, the, the original idea, um, I'd actually mentally had the idea to do this for quite some time. And uh, it, it really just happened as a conversation one day um, when I was uh, working in a music shop. Uh, me and a colleague basically just went, well, shall we do it? Um, so we decided to do it and just put a band together. Um, I went home that night and just picked up my guitar and tried to play through the tried to play through it on my own and pretty much got through the album which was not bad and I thought okay so we can probably do this the real challenge was um, getting the other people finding the other musicians who were going to get into it as well um, and with it being such a diverse um, change of music that requires pretty talented musicians it's not you know it's, it's not just straight 12 bars you know there's plenty of people who can do that but being able to literally switch from song to song style to style um, was probably the biggest challenge. And some of the vocals, um, there's a lot of uh, fantastic vocalists, especially the female vocal parts some on the album are incredible. So teaching that and um, one of the challenges and also highlights for me was um, getting other people interested in that music and seeing the smiles on their faces when we got through some of those songs or they heard them, um, in some cases, for Mishy in particular, for the first time ever. So, you know, uh, and she's done an incredible job. Um, highlight of the night, guys. 
highlight of the night. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, what more can you tell me about <coughs> the other people, the people that you have found to bring this album to life? Yeah. And who are going to be joining you on the night? Okay. Um, well, we've got we've got a core band um, of uh, uh, Malcolm Skinner, who is I literally call him my left hand man. He's one of Perth's just finest bass players and great guy, but also just super talented musician and singer. Um, so I, I tend to always have him ar around me, and he knew the album pretty much anyway. So that was great. The drummer Mike Haggerty is um, uh, is just such a pro, and he he learned it. He really, really learned the album brilliantly. In fact, um, I, I learned some things from him <laughs> um, uh, for, through the process as well. But uh, Simon Cox, who is funnily enough not a relative, not that I know, uh, another amazing uh, musician, keyboard player and singer. Um, it just, the first time we did a couple of songs with him on keys, it, it was mind blowing and uh, that was amazing. But we've got, so that's basically the core band. Uh, we've got Mishi Atif. Um, who is just this wonderful female vocalist. She is fantastic and um, uh, very charismatic too. Uh, so she's joining us for a lot of the songs. Uh, and we've got lots of guests during the night. We've got um, one of the Perth's just beautiful guitar players and nice guys, um, Trevor Jala's playing with us. Uh, Jeff Eastman from Resonators getting up and playing a few songs. Uh, the legend, Mr. Blues, <laughs> Mr. Blues, Rick Steele himself, is um, is getting up for a few songs as well. And who knows, there might be a couple more. <laughs> um, that, that, that's basically the, the problem is who who do we invite? There's too many. You do a Clapton night, there's 50 players who, who are going to be upset with me for not being invited. And I'm so sorry, guys, we just can't have everybody this time. <laughs> Maybe the hardest song, uh, at least for me, is uh, Mainline Florida. Uh, it's uh, a very tricky one to sing and play the guitar at the same time. Uh, and it has an incredible amount of intricate riffs. Uh, so for people who think that Eric Clapton's just a blues player, uh, you're a little bit wrong. Um, and, uh, and here's why. <laughs> Say now you're the one Let's get this one thing very clear There ain't enough go 